10 boxes. And then right here's the rest of lambda. Notice if I look at anything below that, that means we have below that m minus 1 rows to deal with, and of course we still have all n columns. What happens if that is not the case? Well, if that's not the case, that means lambda 1 doesn't go all the way out to the end of its row, but that means that the first column is completely contained in lambda mm -hmm. star. Right? Dually. So that's things that look like this. Uh, I'm going to use my colored chalk, which is so nice to provide it for me. So this is the ones where lambda 1 star is M. Remember that this guy, since it's outside, must start with a domino. So the rest of the columns, there are n minus 1. You mean domino, not 2 minus 1? Yes, sorry. It's definitely a domino. I'll connect those dots. As somebody famously once said, can't you connect the dots? Okay. And then, therefore, there here we have how many things left over? n minus 2. And I'll just read it off. How many ways are there to fill the first row here? n plus 1, right, because of the shift. How many ways are there then to fill the rest of the rectangle? Well, the rest of the rectangle is m minus 1 by n. So, right, you have to sum these two and then take this as the bottom, and that's the next term. This domino is weighted by a t. That's the t there. How many ways are there to fill the remaining m minus 2? When you shift m minus 1, and then you're filling now on m by n minus 1. End of story? Are we done? Okay. So I have three minutes, four minutes, something like that. Let me just make some notes about things that are have been in things which are to come. Six, six minutes. Six minutes. Oh my God! I might finish early. Well, let's see. But it's the magnificent of the the Q binomial. Yes. Exactly. But this is actually a different recursion. If you plug in the, the this is not the standard recursion. So. Ah, uh, let's see. What did I want to say for my parting words? Ah, yes. Yeah, so this gets back to, the, to what Doron was asking earlier about different ways to write down this recursion. There's something not so nice about this particular theorem, and it's in fact something that Carla was bugged by when I came up by this, which is, which is that this theorem, or this interpretation, does not repeat not, display the natural symmetry of these guys, right? m plus n choose m is certainly the same because of the factorial definition as m plus n choose n. But that goes away because of the fact that the stuff below the rectangle, the, the line has got to have start with dominoes and that restriction isn't, so you can't transpose things like you'd like to. But we can save you. So we have a second combinatorial term, which I don't have time, but you can look it up in the paper if you like. Which does display symmetry. But it does so at a cost. What? It's more, more complicated? Uh, in, in the, yes, in a way that I will explain immediately. But only gives you a formula for 2 to the m plus n times m plus n. So it overcounts by a precise factor of 2. So either you get an exact count of loose symmetry or you have a symmetric count and then you have to deal with this factor of 2, which is not the end of the world, but it is something. 
Second, once you've got a combinatorial interpretation, of course, you want to do things with it. You'd like to prove theorems about these leukonomial coefficients using this nice combinatorial interpretation. And that is hopefully being done. I haven't checked in with him recently. But Benjamin, Art Benjamin, and his students are trying to use our interpretation in that way. Yeah, Sylvester got lots of mileage and his students from the Q-Sync, so right. maybe you can do something like it. Right, to prove. There's actually a fly in this ointment, which I'll talk about in a, in a minute if you want. Uh, here I'm Because if it had been straightforward, Carl and I would have done it. And he didn't. Here's another thing that Carl and I are still trying to do, although we have not been able to. Uh, it's frustrating. It's really frustrating. So let's consider the Catalan numbers. Because they're very closely related to binomial coefficient. Right? Remember that the nth Catalan number is defined by 1 over n plus 1 times the central binomial coefficient. And now play exactly the same game. Right? Define define an ST analog, say C sub curly brackets n, by putting curly brackets around everything in sight. Right? So when I gave this talk at MathFest, Lou Shapiro from Howard University asked, well, do this. I mean, what can you say about these guys? Are they, right, just like Catalan numbers are integers, are these polynomials with non the coefficients? Well, it seems to be. I mean, that's what I believe in my heart of hearts from all the, you know, mathematical code and other stuff that I've been using. So well, we can't prove it yet. Oh, it's still open? It's Is still open. open. Forget about common types. No, com okay, well, I'll tell you what we can prove, and I'll tell you what we can't prove. We can prove that these guys are polynomials with integer coefficients by a totally non-combinatorial argument involving symmetric functions. We would dearly love to be able to replace this with <laughs> negative integers, <laughs> but we can't. They don't know what the count is. Right. Is open. Right. So we have no combinatorial interpretation. If we had a combinatorial interpretation, we would know that these were not negative integers. You don't have a conjectured one either. We are nowhere near a conjecture. We, we, we cannot find. I mean, we're slowly working our way through the list of. Right. CN has a, a massive number of combinatorial interpretations. And we're massively, you know, one by one, trying to go through them, and right, because we just compute these out and say, okay, how could we w put not tiles on this interpretation in a way or something else? And so far, we have become getting a total blank. Um, I think one of the reasons why it's so hard is because, of course, these things satisfy a much more intricate recurrence relation than, than the right, because it's no longer nice linear sum of, of quadratic terms. But anyway, I guess that's probably a good place to stop. Thank you so much for coming and listening, and I hope you enjoyed it, and maybe even something. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you.